to Nationwide on this first day in the month of August. I am Hawa Salihu Adama. President Muhammadu Buhari has closed the case in defense of his electoral victory before the presidential election petition court sitting in Abuja. The lead counsel to President Muhammadu Buhari, Wale Olani Peku, SAN, told the court that the legal team of the president was satisfied closing its case have reviewed the submissions of the petitioners. Over now to Dele Atumbe. In this case, the PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, are the petitioners while INEC, President Muhammadu Buhari, and the All Progressive Congress are the respondents. The petitioners are challenging the conduct of the presidential election in Niger, Jobe, Kano, Kaduna, Katsina, Bochi, Borono, Nasarawa, Kebi, Gombe, and Gawa states. All the areas being challenged on the conduct of the election are within the North Central, North East and North West geopolitical zones of the country. As agreed by all the counsel in the case, the petitioners had 10 days to prove the alleged infractions. The three respondents have six days each to defend the electoral victory of President Muhammad Buhari. While closing its case on Monday, INEC, through its counsel, Usman Ustaz SAN, said the electoral umpire was not calling any witness with the aim of making a no case submission in its final address. In opening its defense, the second respondent, apart from tendering documents to push his case, President Muhammadu Buhari, through his counsel, Wali Olani Pekun SAN, called witnesses to prove that the presidential election was free and fair in the 11 states being challenged by the PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar. APC ward agents from Nasarawa and Niger states have affirmed before the court that the presidential election was conducted in line with the Electoral Act in their states. On the issue of eligibility, Wale Olani Pekun SAN has equally laid before the court the certified true copy of the statement of results of 18 candidates, including President Buhari, who sat for the school leaving certificate examination at the Casina Provincial Secondary School in 1961. One of the classmates of President Muhammadu Buhari, Suleiman Maradua, at the Casina Provincial Secondary School also testified before the court that he took the school leaving examination alongside others in 1961. Before closing his case, President Muhammadu Buhari called seven witnesses. Wale Olani Pekun SAN said, having studied the soft and the adwares of the petition and the evidence of the petitioners, the legal team of President Buhari was satisfied with the evidence it has laid before the court. The All Progressives Congress, through its counsel, Latif Agbemi, SAN, argued that since the petitioners have not been able to prove the case of alleged infractions during the presidential election, the party would not call any witness. Fagbimi SAN thereby closed the APC case as the third respondent in the matter. With this development, counsel in this matter have between Monday 5th August 2019 and 16th August 2019 to file their final addresses and replies on the point of law. I made out a case for them to refute. That is just the input. I assure you that uh, this case, I hope so, we define electoral jurisprudence in this country one way or the other. Justice Mame Gaba led presidential election petition court, thereby adjourned till 21st August 2019, when all parties in the matter will adopt their final addresses. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has approved the immediate release of funds for the actualization of Nigeria's second self-assessment report for good governance using the African Peer Review Mechanism of the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD. Speaking at an interactive session of the newly inaugurated National Governing Council of NEPAD, 
Permanent Secretary Economic and Political Affairs in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Gabriel Aduda said, Nigeria hopes to set the pace for good governance in the continent. We will compare reviewing our performances in all these sectors, the area of population, the area of education, in the area of poverty alleviation, the area of health, in the area of name them, even migration, illegal migration and what have you. So we think that this is a very good thing for Africa at this point in time and Nigeria has to take the lead as usual. In fact, one of the areas that is very clear is how to decentralize governance, you know, because it's not just governance at the federal level, but how about governance at the state level, at the local government level, at the community level. And we are saying we are going to be frank with one another. We have to say where we are doing right, where we are not, and let others also see us, you know, because that's the whole intent of a peer review. The African Peer Review Mechanism of the African Union Development Agency now has 33 member countries as participants. Former Head of State General Abdus Salami Abubakar has called on Nigerians to avoid unnecessary hate speeches and work towards ensuring peace and harmony in the country. General Abdus Salami Abubakar made the call at the end of a two-day roundtable discussion on national security issues for political stability, which held in MENA. Dauda Mohammed reports that a six-point communique was issued at the end of the meeting. After two days of extensive deliberations by a cross-section of a mix of elders, security agencies and representatives of youth groups from the different zones of the country, participants emerged looking optimistic, an indication that perhaps their recommendations can bring lasting solutions to the challenges of the country. Let's hope the proposal, the recommendation, went further to the various authorities. They will have a look at it and find it useful to, for implementation. The communique at the end of the meeting, read out by General Anton Ukbo, a former military administrator of River State, suggests that the role of the military should be limited to defending the country and not doing police jobs as presently being witnessed. The communique also calls on political leadership at all levels to engage citizens, including traditional rulers, while addressing the root causes of insecurity. The communique also calls on actors engaged in crop farming and livestock production to migrate from traditional to modern systems of agriculture to boost profits. The federal and state governments should ensure clear separation of religion and state as stipulated in the 1999 Constitution while adhering to the rule of law in addressing issues of religion and insecurity and security. You cannot talk about peace with only a, a, a small part. You have to talk with, it has to be inclusive. Women are interested in peace building, in conflict resolution, and being part of the solution. Other recommendations by the roundtable include a call on government at all levels to create an enabling environment for job creation to engage the teeming youth population. In Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. And the Nigerian Copyright Commission now pays attention to internet streaming piracy protection with capacity building as it affects the broadcast industry. Director General of the Commission confirmed this at a workshop in partnership with stakeholders. The Commission's personnel were trained on promoting the anti-piracy drive. The Commission says abuse and infringements in the broadcast industry is now going online, hence the need to protect Nigeria's creative industry, which is the bedrock of every civilization. So for the broadcast industry, you must protect not just the physical space, or the terrestrial space, you must also protect what happens online. And if streaming is the new uh, 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 method by which people access content, then you must also give protection and ensure that streaming is done according to the law. The world is now becoming technology driven and knowledge driven. If you look at the fast, uh, five biggest companies in the world, they don't produce physical goods, they produce intellectual property. So that is why it's very important that we collaborate with uh, the Copyright uh, Commission to uh, look at ways of and, and, um, enforcing rights, copyrights in Nigeria. On legal framework, the Commission says the Copyright Bill 
expected to as an act, strengthen not just the protecting regime, but improve and facilitate enforcement mechanism in every sector of the creative industry, including broadcasting. And the federal government is exploring public-private partnership as a tool that will drive an alternative way to close the gap of funding infrastructure development in Nigeria. Director General Infrastructure Concession and Regulatory Commission confirmed this at the 2019 engineer Charles Mbanefo lecture which focus on infrastructure financing the Nigerian experience and way forward. Over now to Justin Ben Unyi. The difference between developed and underdeveloped nations is access to good and sustainable infrastructure availability to citizens with accompanying economic activity generated by the facilities. Infrastructure financing plays an important role in addressing deficiency of infrastructural facilities in developing economies, which in turn discourages investments and retard economic development. Engineering professionals and other stakeholders are of the view that traditional methods of financing infrastructure through budgetary provisions and execution by direct contract award has proven to be inadequate and most often unimplemented. This creates a financing gap for execution of infrastructure projects. Now the, the, the government is doing a lot. Public-private partnership is a key area. And you can know we just concession the silos. That is brought 10 billion naira into the government revenue. You know, government is also looking at concessioning Lake, government has concession Lake Deep Water Port. The private sector is coming to build that port, $2 billion of investment, and recover investment over a period of time. Government is also concessioning the Ibom Deep Water Port. As I speak today, the military clothing factory in you know, in Daikon, Kaduna has just been approved by the president. The private sector is coming to make an investment over a hundred million dollars to revive the entire, bar, you know, so government is doing a lot. The lecture was in honor of Charles Mbanefo, an engineer who during his working career was instrumental for the structural drawings and construction of some major districts and monumental edifices in the federal capital territory. In Abuja, Justin Bem Unyi, NTA News. To Electro Matters now, election is one of the biggest activities in Nigeria in terms of the involvement of people as voters, election officials, candidates, observers, party agents, transporters, the media, as well as other service providers. However, the primary concern for all those involved in this is the security of the environment and protection of the process. Timothy Yusuf reports on a stakeholders roundtable in Abuja towards the attainment of credible governorship elections come November 16th in Kogi and Bielsa states. What can we do to make elections better? How can we do it better? And what outcomes do we want? These are the questions demanding answers from this broad spectrum of stakeholders ahead of the Kogi and Bielsa governorship elections. Conduct of transparent primaries to avoid perceived acrimonious exercise, as was experienced during the 2019 general elections, leading to several litigations in the courts, dominated this meeting's agenda. Our attitude to electoral offence, our lack of sanctions for electoral offence, since 1999 to today, I challenge anybody to tell me who is in prison on account of electoral offences. We need to be clear about that. All the non-sensitive materials needed for the elections have been identified and will be delivered on Thursday, 1st August 2019 to the respective states. After the party primaries, sensitive materials, ballot papers and result sheets will be produced and customized by the local government areas and subsequently delivered to the central bank a month before the election. These two elections are critical, not only to INEC, but to all of us as citizens of our dear country, Nigeria. Citizens and voters in the election are advised to avoid vote trading and in good conscience vote candidates of their choice. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And treaty to protect the waterways is signed in Lagos. Over now to Hingino for this and other reports. It's over to you. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Lagos. A 
treaty which will guarantee a better working relationship between National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA, and Lagos State Waterways Authority, LASWA, has been ratified. No Sausla reports that a 10-year lingering dispute between the federal and the Lagos State government over the control of waterways has come to an end with the signing of an agreement between both parties. The row over the control of waterways surrounding Lagos started more than 10 years ago. The National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA, and Lagos State Waterways Authority, LASWA, with both parties locking horns in a protracted legal battle. With the new agreement, both parties will now have a joint responsibility to ensure safety, harmonize tariffs, and monitor regulations on the waterways. What we're doing here very little but very significant is actually a testimonial for us to be able to tell other arms of government that collaboration is possible and from what mr president have said and they continue to say that we need to ease ease of doing business what we have signed is what will guarantee better working relationship through partnership and collaboration for the good our people, particularly waterway users in Lagos and environs. The Laswa General Manager, Oluwadami Lola Emmanuel, expressed optimism that the collaboration would promote safety standards on waterways, adding that it would open up the sector for sustainable developments. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu has expressed his administration's readiness to partner the government of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, in the areas of traffic management and security. The governor disclosed this when he received the Consul General of the UAE Consulate in Nigeria, Dr. Abdullah Almandus, at the Lagos State Government House in Alausa. Nosa Osla once again reports. Governor Songo Olu noted that the UAE in the last decade had become a choice destination for Nigerian tourists and businessmen, adding that this should deepen the existing bilateral agreements between Nigeria and UAE. We're hoping that within your tenor, we can um, further grow the relationship between the two countries um, and look at where we can collaborate with you, um, especially in Lagos states. Um, this is um, a place where you know all of the various international traffic, you know, takes off and, and come into. The Consul General of the UAE Consulate in Nigeria, Dr. Abdullah Amandus, said the aim of his visit was to get cooperation and support of the Lagos state government on various areas of interest between Lagos and UAE. We are looking uh, to support uh, uh, in many kind of many type of area for example education uh, uh, health side uh, social life uh, uh, security most important and the stability of the country. The envoy said the proposed cultural center would assist the two countries to build a strong social cultural bond which would further strengthen their relationship in Lagos Nosa Osula NCA News. A set of poetry books that capture environmental degradation, religious hypocrisy, and the Nigerian culture have been presented to the public in Lagos. Imolia Ayotokede reports that the books contain over 400 points, both in Queen's English and Pigeon. The poetry books are titled Colors and Borders, Walking Truths, and That Beautiful Picture. The three books contain thematic exploration on death and terrorism, culture, prayer rhymes, and societal ills. The book reviewer described the books as must read and recommended it for all. So that's by the fact that um, you have dominant themes for each of the works. There, there is still an element of commonality amongst all the three collections. The books mirror day-to-day -day activities not just in Nigeria but around the world. This, the author says, is deliberate so that the books can be relevant in all sectors and appreciated by all. The books are pills for societal uplift. They cover all aspects of society. The author 
Kato Eriata Oribabo, fondly called the Merchant of Poetry, is a social commentator and literary activist. He has authored several poetry collections, including If You Hear Say I Did Prison, which is in pidgin language. The idea of the book is to encourage and then help the younger ones or people in society to read. One of the books, That Beautiful Picture, is a 168-page collection of small poems in which the author employs unique poetic form with manipulative language. This is me, unapologetic Nigerian woman. In Lagos, in Moliayo Tukide, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos Nationwide continues after this commercial break. And event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College Jaws is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, George, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on protocol, event management and public relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee, 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS. Training you to be the best you want to be. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide. Weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first. Get it fresh. Thanks for rejoining us. It's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Moving on, more than 26,000 patients in Meru local government area of Zamfara State are to benefit from a free medical outreach by the Nigerian Air Force. The beneficiaries drawn from three districts of the area are mostly those affected by activities of the armed bandits. Over now to Jamilu Ibrahim for details. Kanomo community in Maru local government area of Zamfara State is one of the areas host hit by the activities of armed bandits, which have exposed them to a number of health-related challenges. Free access to basic health care services has obviously become one of the major needs of the inhabitants as they begin to enjoy the restoration of a relative peace in the area. 
the flag of a free medical outreach for members of the communities by the Nigerian Air Force is therefore very pertinent and timely, as demonstrated by a large turnout of patients from the three major districts of the area. The free medical services, which target 26,000 patients, cover medical consultations, counseling, basic laboratory screenings and treatments, surgery, medical glasses, and drugs. It also includes free distribution of treated mosquito nets to pregnant women and nursing mothers. The chief of air staff have been doing this across the country. They have been doing it virtually all over the country, all the states of this country. And they also so noticed that the Kanoma community here, for whatever reason, they have these needs. And therefore, he has directed us to be here to carry out these uh, services. Village head of Kanuma, Marafa Muhammad Musa, who spoke on behalf of three district heads in the area, expressed gratitude to the Nigerian Air Force for the intervention and enjoined the beneficiaries to strictly abide by the instructions given to them by the medical team. Some of the beneficiaries who spoke with NTA News said the gesture will go a long way in alleviating their suffering. The NAF medical outreach, which is built to last for three days, is expected to be extended to some other local government areas of Zamfara State. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And from our JOS Network Center, Felicia is on standby with the report of INEX distribution of materials for the Pengana constituency by election. Hello, Felicia. It's over to you. Welcome to JOS. Governor Simon Lalong has pledged to complete and inaugurate ongoing projects within the Jos metropolis in the first 100 days of his second term in office. The governor gave the indication when he undertook an unscheduled inspection visit to some project sites within the city. Priscilla Grumnan reports. The unscheduled inspection afforded the governor opportunity to see the completed township roads in Angwarogu, Dogon Agugu, Adebayo Street, and the ongoing construction work at Duse Uku St. Michael's Road, as well as the completed Alikazore Bridge. The governor said his administration will not rest on its hours in the provision of basic social amenities to the citizens of the state. We are moving towards the 100 days of the office, and that is why I took my time to open myself to inspect some of these roads and to be sure that these roads are finished and also the quality of the job. Let me confirm myself and then we will prepare some of them for commissioning for the members. But I'm very happy that these areas were not good areas uh, in terms of uh, mobility. And you can see the excitement in the people. Members of the communities visited expressed joy at the developmental strides being witnessed by the Lalong-led administration and called on him to continue to do more. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. Ahead of the Saturday's Pengana constituency by election for the State House of Assembly, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Plato State has distributed sensitive materials to the electoral officers of Basa local government area. The exercise at the Central Bank of Nigeria in Jos had relevant stakeholders in attendance. Mary Dongtur reports. The electoral body in the state said the by-election will hold in seven registration areas, which are Jingir, Kadamo, Gurum, Zabolo, Rimi, Buji, and Kasuru registration areas. The resident electoral commissioner said the commission has recruited and trained staff participating in the elections and held series of interactions with relevant stakeholders. So as far as we are concerned, the main and the materials are already, you have seen the security, security have assured us that they have deployed enough number uh, of personnel that will cover the election. For the police, security of the sensitive materials and citizens before, during and after the election is in place and called on all to be law-abiding and conduct themselves in a peaceful and orderly manner. The police, as well as other security agencies, are fully ready. Already we have done our deployment, five, five per police units, and uh, we are going to cover the right center. The materials distributed include forms EC8A, EC8B, and EC8E, which are ballot papers, result sheets, and declaration forms. In just Mary Domtur, 
NTA News. That's our contribution from Joss is back to Hawaii in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Felicia. And the committed and resilient efforts of federal government at improving the welfare and well-being of migrants and internally displaced persons across the country is described as a fate achieved in humanitarian crisis. Regional Director of the International Organization for Migration West Africa, Mr. Richard Danziga, stated these while engaging the National Emergency Management Agency on humanitarian intervention in the country. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu completes the report. Nigeria, like many countries of the world, has had its own share of humanitarian crisis as a result of migrational challenge, terrorism, natural disaster, and communal skirmishes, among others. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has been in the center of efforts to surmount the challenge through a carefully streamlined strategies and operations. No wonder the regional director of International Organization for Migration did not hesitate to show her encomiums on the federal government for providing the political will for the transparent job. And the work on the ground uh, that's been achieved by NEMA, by SEMA, uh, by your partners, including us, IOM, has dramatically improved uh, over the last three years. More importantly is our collaboration in the Northeast, uh, particularly in the area of uh, displacement tracking matrix and other related capacity building which IAM has been providing to, to NEMA. That is to say, that is a clear demonstration of collaboration to address humanitarian crisis. The meeting also consolidates agreements on permanent solution to relocate migrants and internally displaced persons to safer grounds. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. And Obehi in Benin is next on our lineup. Awa, thanks for joining us in Benin. Delta State Governor Ifanyo Kowa has urged workers to think of creative ways to contribute to national development. He gave the charge when he received the President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, on a courtesy visit. Ifo Maokafo has the details. In his first tenure, he approved the 33% pension increase, paid promotion areas of civil servants, approved the implementation of minimum wage for workers in the state. These notable achievements have earned Dr. Fanyo Koa accolades from the Nigerian Labour Congress as the worker-friendly governor. For comrade Ayuba Waba, Delta State is an investment destination with viable opportunities. We are proven to be a partner in progress, not only to the workers, pensioners and their family in this state, but to the good citizens of Delta State. Gavni Fanyokua attended the NLC for its cooperation, objectivity, partnership and commitment in handling crisis of workers in Nigeria. I will not fail to always mention that at the time that things were tough, the labor unions were able to bring critical suggestions that helped us to go through the very difficult times. And they were able to keep the house sane and to make all of us work in partnership. And today things are getting better. We hope that it can get much better than it is. Comrade Ayuba Waba promised the union would stop at nothing to ensure that all states of the Federation implement the new minimum wage in Asaba. If Okafo, NTN News. The 31st July is globally observed as World Rangers Day. It commemorates now rangers who lost their lives or got in harm's way in the course of duty. Hanwili Okolo has details of the day celebrated at Okumu National Park in Edo State. 
The Okomo National Park, though the smallest of Nigeria's seven national parks, has approximately 19,712 hectares of land of green forest vegetation, wildlife, tall trees, and rivers. It was initially created in 1985 as a wildlife sanctuary to protect endangered species. The park has survived the test of time because of dedicated rangers who had guarded and nurtured the park to date. The World Ranger Day is also to celebrate the work of protecting the planet's natural treasures and cultural heritage. For people that are approaching, they should realize that this is only uh, remaining resources we have, about, particularly about wild animals that in fact have been searched for all over the world. Guests were enlightened on their range of activities via drama presentations and a visit to the museum and orphanage. Laying of wreaths for the fallen heroes and tree planting were also part of the day's lineup. The theme, protecting wildlife and wild places, is deeply ingrained in the daily operations of the National Park Service. 47 officers were recognized for their diligence so far. Okomo National Park is located in Ovia Southwest local government area of Edo State. In Benin, Aunli Okolo, NTA News. And that's it from Benin. Let's join Hawa now for more on Nationwide. Shobei and moving on for residents and business operators in Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital, the 2019 rains have come with tales of war as they have had to count losses due to the destruction of property worth millions of naira. Edidion Iba completes the report. For Mr. Efiong Asukwa, a 60-year-old retiree of Akwaibom State, Sunday, July 7, 2019, was no ordinary day as he woke up to the sad reality that all he had worked for all through his active years had been washed off by flood waters. His plight is not an isolated case, as about seven other families were equally affected by the rains of that day. I have no relief. This house was for me to settle for my children. I, it is not now that I'm going to build a house. Since we entered this raining season, we have no rest at all, at all, because of water. The water really affects us so much. It has turned out to be a source of misery to the residents of this place, because, principally, because of the poor job done by this company. Out of the five-kilometer stretch of road in the estate, the worst hit is D-Line, a wet housing estate extension, and this, residents say, is making life unbearable for them. I'm pleading with the government, please come to our aid. Other areas affected by flood in Uyo Metropolis include Osongoma Estate, Atiku Abubakar Way, and Akaitinan Road. All efforts to speak with the Aquabum State Commissioner for Works proved abortive. In Uyo, Edid Yongiba, NTA News. Over now to Mohammed in our Meduguri Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. and welcome to Maiduguri. Borno State Government has launched Youth Empowerment Scheme with the aim of ending restiveness, political thuggery and lawlessness among young men and women in the state. The State Governor, Professor Babagana Umara, launched the scheme at the Alkanami Warrior Sports Centre in Maiduguri. Mohamed Goni reports. 2,762 youth, referred to as ECOMOG in the political arena, have been selected to benefit from the first phase of the Empowerment Scheme designed to be extended to all the 27 local government areas of the state. Each of the beneficiaries is to receive 30,000 naira commencing from this month up to six months, while the Borno State Environmental Protection Agency is to supervise their activities, including keeping the environment clean. Governor Babagana Umara said the state government has set aside 504 million naira for that purpose, adding that at the end of the six months, the youth will be provided with start-off grant to venture into any trade of their choice. He added that the launching of the scheme signaled the beginning of the end of political targeting and ushered in a new dawn of political decency and decorum. Government will ensure about abandoning towards acquisition of skill in capital, with massively agriculture tailoring ICT ETC. The governor informed the gathering that state government will work in partnership with the security operatives to rid the state of drug abuse, lawlessness, and indiscipline, warning that government will not hesitate to take measures against any youth who constitute nuisance in public places. APC State Chairman Ali Bukar Dalori and the Chairman of the Empowerment Committee, Barista Kakasha Olan, charged the youth to take advantage of the scheme to add value to their lives and further warn them against reverting to all practice. 
FEC youth leader, Baba Mohamed Baba, appreciated government for the scheme and appealed for consideration of other segments of the youth, including the physically challenged. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Shkoni, NTN News. Pilgrims from Borno State for the 2019 Hajj have been enjoined to pray for an end to the lingering security challenges across the country. Governor Babagana Omar Azulu made the call during the inauguration of the first flight from the state for the 2019 Hajj pilgrimage. Naomi Aboku reports. Governor Babagana Omara had while addressing the 560 pilgrims from the state boarding the first flight charged them to be good ambassadors of the state while in the Holy Land and to desist from acts capable of tarnishing the image of the state and the country as a whole. He equally enjoined them to pray for the leadership of the state and the country to enable them to discharge the responsibilities bestowed on them and further apologized to them over the conditions he found them in while monitoring the screening exercise, giving assurance that government is committed to the welfare of pilgrims. The first flight comprised 250 female pilgrims, 313 male pilgrims, as well as seven staff of NACON. In Meiduguri, Naomi Aboku, NTN News. Time now to take some commercial messages. Nationwide continues after. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. Or visit www.nta.ng for live streaming. Visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thanks for staying. And the report just in says 10 members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria charged with criminal conspiracy, unlawful assembly and assault, among others, have been arraigned at the magistrate court, who says on 2 Abuja, in continuation of the trial. Over now to Habiba Oladipo for details. At the commencement of trial, the prosecuting counsel, Donatus Abba, called on the first witness, one inspector Paul. Igoche, attached to the FCT Police Command, who told the court he took 18 photographs to document the destruction of property and vandalism of vehicles by members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria. The prosecuting counsel later tendered the pictures in evidence before the court. Subsequently, efforts by the defense counsel, Osaze Ebi, to establish if the accused were responsible for the attacks and destruction of property proved abortive, as the witness could not confirm for certain if he saw any of the suspects at the scene. We were able to put in a one witness, and uh, we were lucky 
18 photographs that we are taking from the incidents uh, we are admitted in in evidence today. The magistrates, Raphael Joshua Dena John, for further hearing on the case to the 5th of August 2019. In Abuja, Habiba Oladipo, NTA News. To other matters now, erosion is threatening the box culverts on Mina Bida Road, rendering some portions almost impassable. John Sajai reports that motorists plying the routes are appealing to the Niger Delta to the Niger State Government to give the road the desired attention before total failure. 86 kilometer Mina Bida Road is the major link to Mina, the state capital from the southwestern part of the country. Due to heavy vehicular traffic and rainfall, the road is at the verge of total collapse as the major box culverts along the route are being threatened by erosion. NTA News crew observed that a failed portion earlier reported was repaired but noticed that the portion is failing again. It was also observed that boulders and gravel have been dumped at another field portion, but work is yet to commence. About one kilometer from the field portions, it was also observed that the road may soon be cut off as an articulated vehicle has got stopped and already causing traffic gridlock. Vehicles have to take turns to pass through the field portions. What we want now, they should look for a very nice contractor, not the local contractors. Initially, we thought the, maybe the federal government or the Niger state government, they are going to do something better than this. I want to strongly advise the state government to please step in quickly to see to the possibility, not only to analyze this road, but this particular section. They should bear with us. Like I said, that road is overdue. The design life is long way back. The permanent secretary have a call for measures to check incidents of overloading of articulated vehicles plying the route. Jones Ajayi, NTA News. For Nigerians to attain full potential and work as a united people, language must be used as a tool for promoting national integration. This is the submission of speakers at the lecture on linguistics at the Federal University Dutse Jiga States. Hawa Haliru Haruna has more. Nigeria is said to be a multilingual society and indeed a melting point of cultures with 250 ethnic groups and over 500 indigenous languages. The foregoing underscore the need for unity in diversity which can only be achieved through national integration, basically about feeling of common identity among citizens of a nation. It is based on this and the resolve of the university to sustain conversations around some critical issues bedeviling the nation, hence the lectures. Allah created us all from one source and also, you know, created us from different races and uh, different tribes so that we understand one another and uh, live together. And the best amongst us is the one who fears him most. So if we can understand this lesson, I think there is no, there shouldn't be any problem. The guest lecturer Vice-Chancellor of Federal University Geshua, Professor Andrew Haruna, said diversity of languages does not divide the nation. It is an opportunity for us to have a dialogue like this. My dialogue is not to condemn, but to interrogate ourselves as leaders of Nigeria today, so that together with the government of the day, we can make Nigeria a better place. He said Nigerians must raise up against manipulation of linguistics, fight stigmatization and the use of linguistic differences as political distraction which hinders integration and development of the country. The British government has promised to strengthen its relation with Nigeria through youth empowerment and support in critical sectors of agriculture, education and small-scale businesses. UK Secretary of State Department of International Development said this when he visited Governor Nasir Arufai of Kaduna State. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports. It is the first assignment of the Secretary outside the United Kingdom since his appointment less than a week ago. After some hours with Governor Nasir Ahmad Arufai behind closed doors, the British Secretary briefed the journalists. And I've had a really good discussion with the governor talking about the innovative work that he has been doing in the state 
the work that we're also supporting through uh, uh, my department, uh, and of course, um, talking not just about the, the, the work in terms of education and healthcare, but also talking about economic development. They are developing the first real ranch in Nigeria, in Damao. Uh, they are investing close to 50 million euros. Uh, with the objective of uh, sedentarizing the herders so that they stop moving up and down with all the attendant problems this has caused. This is perhaps the most advanced and most successful attempt at solving the farmer herder problem. Besides support in education and health care, Governor Erufaya and his guests discussed issues of bilateral interest regarding the forthcoming Africa Investment Summit scheduled for January in London. Nigeria is one of the key partners with British government in Africa. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. And the opportunities for young people, especially women intending to be entrepreneurs, are becoming brighter with more avenues being created by government and other partners. The latest is a partnership between the Small and Medium Scale Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Smeden, and an oil company to empower young people. Smeden is to provide technical support and business development services while the NGO provides finance. In, in fact, what we need to do at this moment is to concentrate largely on the macro small businesses so that they can meet all the challenges that is facing them by the signing of the African Trade Agreement. And then our agency, which is Sadilo's responsibility of this nature, and I think we also need to double up our airport so that we can improve the life and the quality of the product of these entrepreneurs. So that's why we are partnering with Smeden to be able to give uh, a technical guide and training that will facilitate um, ability. We know very well that government cannot do it alone. A technical working committee for the partnership between Smeden and the organization was inaugurated. The call on every Nigerian to join the present administration's fight against corruption is vital towards complementing government's effort at eradicating the menace. This was the thrust of the presentation of analysis of media reports and corruption cases in Nigeria released by the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center. Timothy Yusuf reports that the analysis is a biannual review of newspaper reports. This edition covers August 2017 to July 2018. The report identifies alleged non-compliance to submission of audited reports by ministries, departments and agencies, gross violation of public procurement law and illicit financial flow. To continue to tell them the truth, even if they don't want to hear, we have to say it, and demand for accountability. It is important that media reports on corruption continue to be in public domain, continue to provide needed information that will help the citizens understand the gravity, the animosity of, this, uh, of corruption in Nigeria. We are going to look at this, and we are going to see what government can do, and we appreciate the work. The report appeals to government to punish defaulters according to the law. Sports is next with Kene Emma Agbodike. 18 gymnasts Thursday departed Nigeria to compete in the 2019 Africa Level System Gymnastics Championship in South Africa. Despite the challenges faced by the team with some of the athletes not being able to get tickets, they are confident about making the country proud. After they took um, time out from school, that's the only day, and uh, we've been working seriously. My target is to win at least um, two gold medals for each competition. The Africa Junior Level System Gymnastics Championship Championship runs from 2nd to 5th August in Pretoria, South Africa. The second edition of the Chief of Defence Staff Inter Barracks Youth Championship ended Wednesday in Abuja with Lungi Gunners winning the men's basketball event while their female team emerged winners in volleyball. Yomek's team came first in badminton at the expense of grassroots team. In my resolve to positively engage the barrack youth population, I've reactivated sporting facilities, sporting uh, sponsored players, clubs, 
transporting capabilities, uh, building initiatives among sportsmen and women in the barracks. Over 300 youths from 12 teams within the barracks in Abuja took part in the seven-day games. A six-month management takeover of African football governing body by FIFA expectedly begins August 1 with General Secretary Fatma Samura serving as FIFA General Delegate for Africa. The move is intended to streamline a number of reforms necessary for effective administration of the sport on the continent. Meanwhile, FIFA has expanded the Women's World Cup to 32 teams for the next tournament in 2023, even as the bidding process to host the tournament reopens October 4. With sport update Kenan Ima Abudike, NTA News. The body of the late special assistant special duties to the permanent secretary state house Tijani Yusuf has been laid to rest in Mina according to Islamic rights. Suleiman Kodugi reports that the Niger state governor Abubakar Sani Bellu, former head of state general Abdul Salami Abubakar and the emir of Mina were among sympathizers that attended the prayer. Prayers were held jointly by the chief imam of Mina, Mali Ibrahim Safari, and imam of the state house, Mala Abdwahid Abubakar Suleiman, at the palace of Emir of Mina, Alaj Umar Farouk Baogo. The Islamic scholars prayed Allah to forgive the deceased and grant the family and friends he left behind the fortitude to bear the laws. For Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, General Absalami Abubakar, and Permanent Secretary State House, Jalal Harab, late Tijani Yusuf, was a man of honor that lived his whole life for the service of the nation. He shall be missed, not only by his family, but uh, his colleagues in the State House. Uh, he has served in the State House for so many years, and uh, uh, at any given opportunity, he made sure he did his job properly. He's a gentleman who has dedicated his life for the last 30 years serving this country. He's an encyclopedia of the villa. I learned so much from him. I learned patience. I learned honestly. I learned sincerity. And above all, I learned what it is to be a trusted ally. Late Halaji Tijani Yusuf died at the age of 63 and left behind a wife and six children. In Mina, Suleiman Kodogi. NTA News. And next is a check on Friday's weather.